This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Impression A877 for AT&T. This is obviously a large touchscreen phone, and it's a lot like the Samsung Eternity. It runs a touch with UI, but it's got one trick up its sleeve, which is this nice roomy keyboard. It reminds us a lot of the HTC Fuse keyboard, only I'd say it's even bigger and roomier. Let's take a look at the phone itself. There are hardware buttons on this, a plenty compared to some touchscreen. Well, you've got call, send, and end buttons here. This one, if you hit the call, send button, it's going to bring up call history, not the dialer. So you're going to need to hit the on-screen dialer when you want to punch in a number. Or alternatively, you can use contacts. Also a quick link right here. I'm doing that. And the middle button brings up the calendar by default. And on the side we have volume control buttons right here. And this is the quick launch for a quick palette of other applications, commonly used applications. It brings those up on screen. Eternity had something similar. This is the lock button to lock and unlock the screen right here. It's a little hard to press because, as you can see, this is kind of a curvy beveled phone right here. And when you try to press on it, the phone just wants to slide open the keyboard and your finger slides off. So we liked it on the Eternity a bit better. This is your camera button right here. It has a 3 megapixel fixed focus camera. And a lens on the back. Up here is your USB and headphone jack port. Under a very tight little rubber door. It's the Samsung Blade Connector, the same that's used on the Eternity, and on the new Propel Pro also. And that's also where you charge it. Here it is compared to the Eternity. You can see that that organic LED display is much more vibrant than the standard touchscreen used on the Eternity. Eternity is, of course, a little bit smaller and thinner because it doesn't have that keyboard built in and more angular. And the back on the Eternity mimics the camera much more so than does the impression. Here it is next to the fuse. It's a little bit bigger than the fuse actually, though the fuse is thicker. And obviously more angular. And here they are. Open up again. This is the bigger phone. But you get this really roomy keyboard. The keys are huge on this compared to the Fuse, which is something because normally the Fuse compared to other phones seems to have a pretty capacious keyboard. So let's take a look at the keyboard. It's a four row keyboard, so you have embedded numbers over here. You're going to have to hit the FN key to enter numbers. Most everything is in a pretty normal place. You have the enlarged space bar that's normal. You have your period over here somewhat enlarged return and backspace keys. This is the back of the phone with the cover taken off, obviously. Here's your battery. This is the SIM card slot right here. And we're showing this particularly because this is where your micro SD card slot is. It's right here. So you don't actually have to take the battery out to get to it, as you do with the Eternity, thank goodness. But you do have to take the back off. And this back is not easy to get off. It's really tight. It's a 3.2 inch organic OLED display that's bright, vibrant, and it has haptic feedback, which means it vibrates when you touch the screen. This is resistive. That means you can use your fingernail, a stylus, or your fingertip. It's not like the iPhone, where you can only use your finger. As you can see, it switches to landscape mode here. It doesn't switch to landscape mode automatically in all applications, though. We'll get to that a little bit later. You've got a nice scrollable palette of applications here. There's no need for scrolling right now because there are, all the icons do fit on the screen. And you've got your quick bar here. You can't change that for message contacts and dialing. And on the home screen, you've got the TouchWiz widgets, which is a scrollable bar basically of little shortcut items that you'll drag out onto the screen to use. Most of them, that is. Pretty much the same selections here that you had on the Eternity and a bunch more. We're happy to see that they finally added a shortcut to the web browser on the home screen via widget. This is a 240 by 400 pixel display. Works in both orientations here. 
here on AT&T's Media Net Home screen. Scrolling is very easy on this. If you want to bring up the URL bar and controls, they're right here. You can bookmark easily and you can get to your favorites quickly and this goes to settings right here. And let's visit our site and see how a real website looks because this is a full HTML browser. And here it is loading our website. Full HTML version over AT&T's 3G HSDPA connection with about two-thirds signal strength. And once the page is done loading, it'll automatically hide the navigation items here. And once the page is done loading, you can hit this button right here to go to full screen mode. That's a little bit different from the Eternity. Again, scrolling is easy. The fonts are pretty large. No need to zoom in and zoom out. The applications are again pretty similar to what's on the Eternity and, and not so different from the view. You've got your My Stuff here which leads to any games and pictures, videos, things like that that you have installed. And you've got Singular Video, at and Music Player, along with a bunch of their value-added applications, which means things you generally have to pay a monthly fee for, like Music ID and XM Radio, and all that kind of good stuff. And... Take a look at CV right here. Singular video looks really stunning on this large display. And the playback is excellent. Let's take a look at Tiger Woods. And it automatically switches to landscape view. Tiger Woods begins his pursuit for a fifth green jacket at Augusta National on Thursday. First round coverage right here on ESPN. This is a portion of his practice round yesterday at Augusta National. So video playback quality is really good, as you can see, and the speakers are quite loud. And it nearly fills up the screen. This is 4 by 3 aspect ratio, so you have black bars. But if you did want to stretch it, tap on the screen and you can hit this, and it will stretch. But it is a little bit distorted, the aspect ratio, when you do that. It's definitely the best CV playback we've seen on an AT&T phone. The phone also has a messaging client. It's the same thing you'll see on most AT&T feature phones. It does text messages, multimedia picture messages, and video messages, and it can handle email via mobile email. This supports a pretty good selection of popular email account types. As you can see right here, Yahoo Mail, AOL, AT&T, Artlink, Juno, Mindspring, Comcast, but you can't enter your own in it. Say you have mypersonaldomain.com, you can't enter that in, and there is no built-in Gmail support in the client. Now we'll take a look at the GPS and AT&T Navigator, which is Java-based. This is a $9.99 a month service that gives you turn-by-turn -turn spoken directions, maps, and points of interest and the phone has a GPS built in. The usual set of options, you can choose to drive to a location, search for a point of interest, check out maps and traffic, and change settings. We're going to get a map of our location. And that was a cold start. That's really, really fast. If you open up the keyboard, it does not flip into landscape mode. So we are in portrait mode. You can drag the map around. It's downloading map data over the air, obviously very quickly. So the phone has 3G HSDPA. It does not have Wi-Fi. Sorry, it's not a smartphone. Usually you just find that on smartphones. But it does have Bluetooth, and it does support A2DB Bluetooth stereo and pretty much every other profile, including done, headset, hands-free, and all that. And that's the Samsung impression for AT&T. 
from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.